um hello everyone this is shweta tanamala good evening thank you for joining in uh, i am welcoming you all on behalf of women in data science team to wits mumbai 2020 edition this is online session number 4 i hope you all enjoyed previous three sessions if any of you have missed the previous web sessions the recordings are in the same channel you can go through it whenever you are free uh i would like to introduce women in data science community with a quick video before moving to the today's talk data science any data inspired and data driven science is so critical right now more and more decisions are made based on data the amount of data that we gather every day and the insights that data can provide us is just growing exponentially and that is no exaggeration the market for data science and related areas like ai is booming it is so important to have women in artificial intelligence in the area of data science and also in leadership. roles is being able to use data to solve issues and understand bigger problems it's critical and we need women in these roles every individual brings their own perspective and so we need to make sure the entire workforce is represented and the good news is there's so many jobs and many different ways to combine their passion area and their skills in data science and get involved i would like you to say what are the problems in the world that absolutely have to be changed and you know can you individually given all the amazing background that you've had so far and all the education that you've got so far what are the unique things that you can do to change the world towards that mission and then think of the technology if that is going to become completely data driven over time then you can't miss that opportunity you've got to join in and 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 have your say if you are not looking at the data from all sort of different angles then you could introduce a lot of bias so it's really really important that we have around the table all genders uh, all races all backgrounds we can't ignore social and structural problems we can't just go in a in a corner and write some code and read math and then we're open. that's that's a solution right we can't do that so we have to think about who is being affected by these algorithms welcome to win <laughs> When we first started this conference, we never would have imagined that we'd be sitting here today with over 200 regional events. We've got over 500 WIS ambassadors worldwide. Many of them are women, but we've also got a lot of men. And these are people who are just passionate about inspiring others within their community. We are in over 60 countries, and year after year, we're blown away. Let's make this next decade the women in the data science uh, decade. What I love about it is that that growth is viral. That people will attend one event in one city and then they'll want to bring it to their cohort or colleagues the next year. This type of industry can be done everywhere, so it should be accessible to everybody. And this is one of the reasons why I love that we are global with this. So we wanted to create opportunities for women to inspire, educate and support women at many different times throughout the year. And one way that we decided we could do that was through a data thon every year, which is a predictive analytics challenge using real-world data. We have over 900 teams from 85 countries, and that's in every continent except Antarctica. When we started with in 2015, we had no idea this was going to be a global movement with tons of international events and a data thon and a podcast show and and now outreach to middle school and high school has just been such a ride. Our latest endeavor is to work on some materials that we can hand off to teachers in schools around the world. This has provided a platform for literally hundreds of women, if not thousands of women, to have an opportunity to be heard. But the truth is, these are really simple terms, but they have a profound impact because they empower someone else. 
be able to do their job better and to be able to take that message. Five years ago, when we were sitting around a coffee table thinking about what WIDS could be, I never in my wildest dreams thought it would grow so far and so wide around the world in just five years. What I'm most excited about is the next five years, because I think this is really just the start. Uh, so we are part of the women uh, in data science Mumbai team, and this is our third annual conference. Uh, for so I would like to invite Dr. Bhavna Nikam for this today session. Uh, thanks for accepting our invite, ma'am. She is the head of AI and uh, machine learning team in Deepiotics Private Limited, Indo, for approximately two years. Before that, she has been working as assistant professor in Institute of Engineering and Technology, Devi Ahalya University, Indo, for good 11 years, where she also completed her PhD degree in machine learning. She ha has her hands on in various fields of machine learning and deep learning, like fraud detection, network intrusion detection, predicting web user navigation behavior, bug classification and documentation classification, etc. Very glad to host you, Bhavna, today. I would like to welcome Bhavna to take the session forward. Thank you. Thank you, Shweta Vedi. Thank you very much. First of all, before beginning this session, I would like to congratulate WITS for uh, their mission, their initiative to take, motivate, encourage, educate the women in the field of data science. And the BITS Mumbai who have started this um, education series for uh, education in the artificial intelligence. So today I'll start with the, I'll take you to the session. Today we'll start with the artificial role of artificial intelligence in data science. Hope all of you are looking, um, I can see, able to see my screen. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so let's start with the artificial intelligence. The uh, this is the table of content. We'll go through these topics one by one. We'll take some time on the understanding the what is artificial intelligence, the industry use cases, industry where we can apply this AI, and the use cases where various use ca cases in that industries. Then the AI, machine learning, and deep learning. What are the differences? How it uh, like uh, how it can help to solve the real world problems. Then application of deep learning in medical imaging, building and training models for medical diagnosis, three key challenges while we are dealing with the medical data. And last, we'll get a summary. We'll start with the artificial intelligence. This artificial intelligence is an area of a computer science that emphasizes the creation of intelligence machine. So basically, in the AI, what we are doing, we are creating the intelligent machine which can react like a human. So whenever we are developing any kind of AI machine, it should be able to pass the Turing test. That is a normally we used to see that if the machine is passing Turing test, then it is perfect to go. Some of the uh, use cases are conversational AI. Right now, we can see that. There are so many um, chatbots available. So chatbots are basically the text-based chatbots. Conversational AI means it should be like voice-based. I should not be able to differentiate whether I'm talking to doctor, I'm talking to the HR manager for the interviewing, or what to whom I'm talking. I'm talking to a machine or a human. So if this kind of machine, intelligent machines, we are developing, it comes under the AI. Then NLP is natural language processing. Here we can uh, do a lot of with the text data. As we can see, this is a, this is social media era. So we are using so many social media networks like Facebook, like WhatsApp. So we are generating more and more and more data. 
so what to do with this data if we are not able to process this data and we cannot conclude something so for that we are we used to do the natural language processing on this data and we perform something uh, then robotics you all might have heard about the sophia is the humanoid so it is a combination of robotics with the ai self driving vehicles car carrying the passenger a car can achieve the accuracy up to 98% and it cannot do mistakes suppose someone is coming from the front side so a human can uh, take a judgment that i should go right or uh, left but machine is trained there is so many sensors through which it can detect lot of things the frequency of coming uh, car where it is going to the wheel direction and all these things so with this help we can uh, work on the self driving cars and uh, these cars are very successful then predicting uh, if we talk about the agriculture then we can predict which crop will be suitable for growing in the area depending upon the weather condition suppose uh, the area is very um, air, weather condition is very hot kind of thing very temperature is very high or very low so which kind of crops will be suitable to grow there that can be uh, decided with the help of ai these are some uh, use cases which we can perform vehicle detection this uh, is used in so many industries with with the help of vehicle detection we can control the traffic we can monitor whether uh, we can do the challan we can make a challan of a car who is going wrong side so there are so many use case we can use it at the airport for uh, uh, vigilant that how many uh, how much time the car was in the parking like that in the agriculture we can detect the quality of crop with that we can see whether the crops are fertile or not we can see what is the humidity level we can analyze that data and we can perform so many things which can help our farmers to grow a good quantity of the crop medical imaging uh, there are very lack of doctors nowadays and uh, uh, this ai tools can help to assist the doctors so a doctor who is who can see uh, suppose uh, 10 ct scans in a day with the help of ai tool he has to just take a decision that yes these are the correct decision given by the ai so i have to just go through it whether everything is right or not so this can help a lot in the medical field in security face based detection system have been developed it's and deployed in the so many industries so this face based attendance system is used to monitor the employees can be used for the surveillance can be used for the security so there are so many use case with by detecting these faces in the stock prediction we can use this for predicting the prices so let's start with the artificial intelligence machine learning and deep learning we a uh, little confused sometimes uh, among these three terms so what is the differentiation among these three terminologies when we talk about the artificial intelligence this is a set of tools and techniques which for incorporating human intelligence into machine when we talk about machine learning so machine learning is a subset of that tools and te techniques which uh, tools and techniques which can be used to perform specific tasks very specific task so ai is a very generalized terminology and machine learning is something very specific kind of thing so suppose a very specific kind of use case i'm having suppose i'm having a lots of lots of data and i wanted to uh, find out something inside inside, inside uh, in the data and then i wanted to take a decision then i'll apply this machine learning kind of thing we have different categories here we have we can have a supervised much kind of machine learning unsupervised kind of machine learning so uh, this is to train a specific for a specific task suppose we uh, human are good uh, in uh, doing all the things but suppose i want to train someone for especially a cooking so this is a specific kind of training i wanted to go, uh, to give to that particular human so this is a specific tools and technique I'll, I'll apply i'll show so many recipes to that human to that machine 
and then they will able to learn from it when we talk about deep learning so this is a subset of machine learning which uses neural network for computation neural network is not a new thing these techniques these algorithms models were uh, there in the theory since long time but what happens suddenly so that it came into the picture so there are two main reason behind that which enables us to use this kind of deep learning algorithms first reason is we have lot of data this neural networks are data hungers so if previously we were not having that much data for a particular things suppose we talk about the social media so you can see that you are even you are generating so much data day by day in a, in one day how many data you are generating so much by using facebook by using whatsapp by using some another instagram uh, and uh, twitter you are generating so much data now what to do with this data so this kind of data are used to analyze the behavior of the person then take a decision suppose you are going to the facebook and you are uh, getting some ads so these are these ads are based on your interest which you have clicked on the facebook so this kind of things uh, so we have now lot of data which enables us to use this neural network uh, technologies second thing which empowered us is the computation power because we are having so much data but we cannot process it with the help of cpu so here we need gpus so gpus tpus now they came into the industry and they give us facility to train the model on a terabytes pentabytes of data using this gpus in in some hours if we talk about there are so many gpus available in the like a uh, uh, industry so we can take the help of that and we can pull our data there we can train we can create our own model and we can create something out of that we can do some prediction we can do apply some computer vision algorithms like that so the the deep learning is a very current um, used in very this current scenario very much in wide industry because of the data and the computation power so these are two key things behind that so let's start with the application some of the applications of this deep learning in the medical diagnosis so first we'll start with the dermatology dermatology is when we are dealing with the skins look at the suspicion in and this dermatology pathologist used to look at the suspicious reason of the skin uh to determine whether the mole is uh, is a skin cancer or not suppose this this kind of things are done by the doctors so they used to give suggest some test for us out of that test whatever pathological findings will be there doctor is going to give you some treatments so this is a time taken process so skin imaging technology has become very important tool and for cl clinical diagnosis of the skin disease when we talk about the medical diagnosis it's very important that whenever we are having any kind of disease uh, early detection should be there fast detection should be there so that doctor can give us a proper treatment at a fast pace so with the help of this ai technology we can do that with the help of deep learning so what what a procedure we can follow here we have to collect so many data about these moles images of these moles and that data that images with that images we are going to train the algorithm and at the end the algorithm is going to give you the uh, answer that whether the this mole was cancerous or not so depending on that the doctor is going to take the decision on what is the level of sensitivity of this uh, um, uh, cancerous cell in my skin so this is one of the field which is very hot in the ai and imaging lot of work is going on in this field second histopathology here uh, tissues under the microscope images were shown to the algorithm 
so by looking at the scanned microscopic images of tissues called whole slide images and determine the extent to which cancer have has been spreaded in a uh, in india and so many countries this cancer uh, leads so many deaths because of late detection so here this tool may help this algorithm may help us so by looking at the picture it can decide that whether it has been sprayed and in what intensity what reason it has been sprayed it till now planning treatment and to increase the chance of recovery become uh, more and more by using this kind of tool in one study in the 2017 using 270 slide images whole slide images ai algorithm were developed and then evaluated against the pathologist it was found that the best algorithm performed as well as pathologist did now in the histopathology so this can assess the doc doctor and this image training with uh, the training the algorithm with the this kind of image data we can get comparable result to the uh, pathologist another a very common problem is diabetic retinopathy so this this kind of disease uh, occurs in the diabetic uh, persons they got this eye disorder so what we can do and this uh, this is very time consuming for the pathologist to find out whether the retina has been spoiled it can lead to the blindness also so early detection of this dr is very 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 important but if we'll talk about the manual process then if we talk about the manual process then we can train the clinician uh, it can train the uh, algorithm with the help of photos <laughs> now next is radiology so radiology is where the ai is being used um, used in the ct x ray and mri radiologist the main job of radiologist is to look at the x rays cities mris and find out whether the person is affected or not with some diseases there are so many diseases which can be find out with the lung x ray with the cities with the mri ai can find patterns in the data that human cannot see even because the algorithm has seen that pattern and it it memorizes that pattern it can reduce work, workload by doing tedious tasks like segmenting uh, segmenting structures so suppose in this uh, uh, example we can see that the x rays uh, can be used to train the algorithm and we can detect from there, there whether the person is affected with the covid or not if we talk about building and training deep learning model for the medical imaging we have to go through some cycles so the first cycle first phase of the cycle is data set preparation second we have to build a neural network and train it third we have to evaluate the models whether it is working fine or not data preparation it depends when we talk about the medical imaging we should have a uh, uh, first in the uh, radiologist or pathologist when we deal with this so whenever we got some data we have to clean the data suppose i am collecting I, my aim is to train the model to detect whether the person is affected with pneumonia or not so what i have to do i have to first select a good set of x rays where the patient is having a confirm finding of the pneumonia so that the selection of the data we can do with the help of radiologist only so subject matter expert is very important plays a very important role here while preparation of the data as it can affect the time of training and quality of training next is data augmentation this augmentation is we are going to increase the data with the help of images because when we deal with the medical imaging we got uh, so many uh, uh, x rays for the normal patient 
but the problem is with when we are dealing with a particular disease so it may be that we got a very lazy data very good quality of Im images for the disease um, the uh, x rays who are having the disease so here the data augmentation play a very uh, good role but we have to be very 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 careful while using this data augmentation uh, in the medical imaging because suppose we talk about the x ray so if i am going to flip i am going to perform the flip the x ray then heart may come at the another side of the x ray which is another kind of disease so this kind of data if we are going to show to the algorithm that will mislead the prediction so we have to be very careful and i'll suggest only rotation should be performed as a data augmentation while dealing with the x-ray images then is splitting the data we used to before putting it into the training we split this data into three data sets one we use for the training second we use for the validation third we use for the testing so training data set suppose we are having 100 images so what we'll do we will divide it into some 60 20 20 ratio so 60 will use for the training purpose 20 i'll i'll use for the validation purpose how my algorithm are working how it is working i wanted to see the loss I wanted to see the accuracy. So for that, I'll keep this validation data and I'll keep updating my algorithm by feedback of this validation data. Then uh, the third thing is testing data set. So in testing data set, uh, what we used to do, this is a very unseen data set, which till now during the complete cycle of training, the data never seen so that we came to know how the algorithm is working on the real time data set that we will only come to know with the testing data set because validation data set the algorithm has seen in during the uh, model building process so first we have to very wisely divide the data set into these three categories sometimes we divide the data into training and testing but i'll suggest we should divide it into three categories training validation and then testing building neural network model and training so what we do when we uh, build a model we have neural network convolution like convolution neural network we should be aware with the basics of the neural network and we should be aware with the under a clear understanding about what is the meaning of convolution what is the meaning of pooling what is the meaning of max pooling average pooling so our core concept should be very much clear before applying this neural network um, on the real time images so here what we'll do we will take input images we will do data processing here we will split this data set into three sets validation training testing will perform augmentation for preparation of data all that things we will do we might have used some image preprocessing uh, techniques here to get a better quality of images and then we will give all these things as an input all these things means training data i'll give to the model for training and then we'll see how it's working so this is the output here you can see this is the output of heat map in the form of heat map this at the last layer this has been gone through the grid cam so i have taken last uh, uh, layer of that so here we can see that in this particular area it is showing that here the lung has been infected so this is how the output will come and this output will go to the radiologist radiologist will see this output and will make some decision based on this that what what treatment should be given to this patient and he can cross verify with the original x-ray sometimes it happens that a very small lesion have been developed in the x-ray but that cannot be seen with the naked eyes so 
this kind of things small small pages can be detected with the help of this algorithms after training the neural network we have to evaluate the model how good we are going how bad the algorithm is performing so that we can improve the algorithm further for that we used to take the we used to see the losses error losses we uh, thinks about the accuracy how much accuracy it is giving for a particular set so here the example suppose the aim is to detect from a x ray whether the x ray is having mass or the x ray is normal while training the algorithm we will look at the loss so the error loss is 0.32 here for normal error loss is 0.51 and desire the labor's accuracy i am getting is 0.48 here 0.51 so what is the aim we want to achieve this accuracy up to 1 and for this 0 so that we can clearly distinguish we have a quite confidence that yes this x ray is having mass or not so now suppose once i have trained the model and i got this result what i have to do i have to update this algorithm again so that i can reduce the loss and i can increase the accuracy so and that is why we are not showing till now testing data to this model we'll work on the validation data only and again i'm going to set the hyperparameter and i'm going to train again retrain the neural network model again once a model have been uh, trained i'm going to see this results how close i am to the accuracy so this is how we can evaluate the models we used to generate the auc curve area under um, a curve for uh, for uh, having the valuation of the data we also take the help of like true positive rate false positive rate and sensitivity specificity of a model so that from each angle we can see how the model is performing specifically when we talk about medical imaging then sensitivity specificity we used to see what is the false positive rate what is the false negative rate that all we have to take care and we have to tune the algorithm according to that there are some key challenges when we deal with this kind of data especially in the these challenges are common in uh, all the data but especially in medical data we got this kind of challenges one challenge is class imbalance what is the meaning of class imbalance there are three main key challenge one is class imbalance second is multitask third is data set size the class imbalance challenge usually we got in so many industry while training the model so this challenge is like frequency of data in the class suppose if we talk about the mass or not mass pneumonia not pneumonia so usually when we see uh, we are uh, doing the x ray of a population so suppose i have taken the x ray of 100 people hardly i'll get only one x ray of the pneumonia other 99 for the normal person, person healthy person so if we'll repeat it repeat it then suppose i'm having now 10000 x rays out of that 10000 x rays i am having only 1000 x rays for the pneumonia remaining 9000 x rays representing a normal chest so this here we want to divide into two classes we are talking about binary classification so the classes here are normal or pneumonia now the scene is like we have 1000 images for pneumonia we have 9000 images for a normal chest x ray now the these two classes have been imbalanced because if data, the model algorithm will see so much normal data it will be very much good tuned to the normal data but it will be less tuned to the pneumonic x rays so we have to make something here so that we can 
uh, reduce this problem otherwise algorithm is not going to perform well there is not an um, like a, i have uh, shown you example we don't have equal number of example of non disease and disease in the medical database this is reflection of prevalence or frequency from which population we have taken 100 times as many normal examples as covid example will not get so how we can handle this class imbalance problem here you can see these x rays are we have three normal x rays one is having mass so this is a class imbalance what is the solution here we can apply for class imbalance first solution we can do is resampling what is sampling sampling data by making more and more and more sample of the mass x ray i can uh, do uh, i can perform sampling there are two categories one is under sampling one is over sampling so either i have to increase this mass x rays or i have to decrease this normal x ray so if i am going to decrease the quantity of this normal x rays that is known as under sampling if i am going to increase this mass x rays that is known as over sampling so we have to do this now the challenge is how we can do how we can generate more data of this x ray so suppose as i told you if you look at this uh, particular x ray so the heart comes in this particular area augmentation with the augmentation we can increase the mass x rays but the problem with the medical imaging if we talk about heart is at this side if i am going to perform the flip operation the heart will come at this side so that will be uh, that will generate another disease another finding uh, in a person so this is a wrong kind of uh, augmentation which we will perform here so what we can do we can slightly rotate rotate this x ray and we can include because either we have to make a copy paste this x ray again and again and we can increase the number or we can generate some data which is having some different thing from this original images so rotation gives a quite good result in the medical imaging i'll not advise i'll never advise to go with a flipping operation for the medical imaging so this is the case so th through which this augmentation if will perform for the mass uh, uh, class then it will generate more and more x rays here of the mass sampling so now with this suppose i'm having three normal x rays and one mass x ray one more mass x ray by rotating this with the 10 degree i have generated then uh, it will balance the class two mass x ray we are having three normal x ray we are having we can generate one more x ray from here by rotating it by the 5 degree so then in that class three normal classes three mass classes so we have balanced the class this is one of the technique very useful technique we uh, used to take for the medical imaging second under sampling we can do but under sampling will reduce your data size so that is not uh, like a good solution for this second solution we can do we can use weighted loss weighted loss is quite technical uh, here so as you can see we are looking at the loss what is the loss here so if we are going to give less number of images for one condition and more number of images for the normal the loss is not going to be balanced because we have imbalance in the data set so how we can tackle this problem what we can do we can create the weighted loss so explicitly when we talk about uh, the convolution neural network it initializes weight randomly but here we can control by giving the weighted loss we can calculate the loss of the normal images we can calculate of the mass images and we can give it as a initial points uh, so with with this uh, technique we can um, uh, control this data imbalancing problem 
here we have to perform some calculation uh, for uh, calculating the weighted loss second key challenge is multitask the problem arises with the image which contains more than one overlapping zone x ray it may contain more than one findings here suppose we talk about here so noodle can be here noodle can be anywhere it is small like a cyst kind of thing so it can be at any reason and suppose two uh, diseases are coming in this reason so this is a overlapping zone whenever i am going to give this x ray as an input for binary classification binary classification will divide this x ray into two categories only either covid or not either pneumonia or not either mass or not so this is a binary means we are having only two classes in that case what will happen when will be having some uh, patient who is having some more problems more disease finding in the x ray and we are going to detect the mass we are going to detect the pneumonia from the x ray so it may mislead the result so this is known as multi uh, class problem multitask problem the uh, how we can solve the uh, this problem in the medical imaging so what we can do suppose we know that in the lung we have 10 kind of findings so we can collect the data suppose mass or no mass pneumonia or no pneumonia edema or no i mean edema so with the mass i have used these two classes also and i can add more and more classes here and then if i'll train the algorithm if i'll train the model with the help of this then definitely it is going to learn the differentiation among these three diseases these three findings so always it is advisable that if you know that you are really dealing with some kind of data which is having multiple findings then we should always train the data not with the binary classification with the multi class classification to keep the remaining class data also in the algorithm so that it will not get confused third key challenge is the data size these architectures when as i told you that neural network was here since a long this is not a new technique this was there in the theory since long but we were not able to use it because we were not having the data that much data so when we talk about the text data when we talk about the nlp yes still we are having so much data but when we talk about the medical imaging yes we have problem with the data size so this is a third kind of uh, key challenge which occurs while dealing with the medical image now what is this thing uh, when we start training the model it should start uh, taking the so many images like it should start with the 10000 x rays x rays at least to train the algorithm 10000 x rays we should have for a pneumonia 10000 x rays we should have at least for the normal 10000 x rays for the other disease and then we should start working on the algorithm but what happens when we talk about this neural networks so this neural network learns features so it learns uh, differentiating between the eyes between the nose between the lips by the shape well the by the places and all this so this is known as convolution so we cannot teach the uh, model we cannot train the algorithm by legs and legs images but the features are same like you can see the age of this penguin these ages these ages if your model have seen previously it were able to detect this kind of shape in the image and this is same as in the x ray so the thing is that we have to train this model with more and more and more images so but there are the capacity that we cannot train the x ray with the penguin first 
we cannot extend the x ray with the phase uh, data first so here what we can do in each and every uh, uh, data field data science field we face this kind of challenges now the solution is available the solution is transfer learning the transfer learning is suppose i am going to transfer my, my knowledge to you now what you will do you will update your knowledge while you will transfer your knowledge to someone else then he has already your knowledge and he is going to update that knowledge by reading more and more by doing hands on more and more now this is known as transfer learning so here what we can do we are using convolution neural network this is the thing which we are doing till now we are taking uh, we are giving x rays as input we are training convolution neural network which is going to classify into these three classes for uh, removing the multi class problems and after that so this part we are we were doing but this will not give you good results so the better way is we can use the pre trained model and which already have seen lot of things and then use this model as pre trained take all the learning from this model whatever this model have learned till now and then trained this model on this x ray images so this will give us a good result because here now if we talk about this particular network this have seen millions of the images of penguin dogs cats so many images this has seen already so it is able to detect whether it is penguin whether it is cat whether it is dog or human or what is that now what we are do doing we are taking all the learning and we are training it with the x ray now we'll get the Uh, model which already trained on the millions of images and it is fine tuned on the x ray so this is the meaning of the transfer learning we have taken some experience from the other model and on my less data size model i am doing the fine tuning so this is how we can update the model and we can take the advantage of more and more data here thank you uh, for listening and i hope you enjoyed this session happy learning if you have any query you can mail me uh, thank you uh thank thanks ma'am for the wonderful presentation i hope audience liked it uh, and coming to the questions we have five questions from the audience first is from aryan tiwari so he is asking what algorithm will you suggest for stock analysis stock analysis uh, which kind of uh, data they want to use it depends first what we want to see uh, before applying any kind of algorithm we have to see thoroughly on the data what will be the input and what will be the output what we want to predict and what we want to give as a input depending on that we will uh perform the we will select the machine learning technique suppose you want to uh predict what will be the price today okay and you are having so many data so we will try random forest we will try some more and more machine learning algorithms there we'll try to find out which algorithm is because it's not a, a golden rule that if i am i love random forest i i love exe boost that it will perform on every kind of data so we have to compare by doing the pilot run on the data which algorithm is working good by fine tuning the data by looking deep dive into the data so this way like uh, we have to think yeah, yeah. Uh, this, uh, jesse joseph <laughs> what if the mole was as non cancerous but it is incorrect i mean yeah so yeah so that's why i told you first before starting we have to be very careful in the medical imaging first we have to take the help of the pathologist with uh, with the help of radiologist we have to see each and every image 
okay when he confines that yes this is a good image to train your model then and only then we should show this kind of images to the model otherwise it will disturb the whole thing it will not be able to if uh, suppose i am having 100 images and that is not of quality not correct images then it will mislead okay so we have to we should always it is advised when we are dealing with suppose stock market we are dealing with the agriculture if we talk about the agriculture so we don't know in which uh, leaf there is a disease so there only that former or that subject matter expert can help us that this is a correct leaf for your data training your model and this is the wrong one so first it's very 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 important that we have to take the help of subject matter expert for separating the data into the classes it's better not to have more data than having a wrong data this is a simple thumb rule yeah and this like in case of detecting covid how do we obtain sustain substantial amount of data as this is a fairly new disease yes so for answering this question let me tell you uh, there is a uh, ieee society have ieee on the github they have there are so many researchers so many doctors have donated the covid patient data so you can take the data from there so many people are working on this data and they are publishing the paper they are finding something new and new and normal data yes uh, on the nih you uh, all of you i think uh, know that there was a pneumonia competition there is a 14 disease finding competition so there are 60000 images of no finding uh, available but their meaning of no finding is that x rays are not should not be treated as normal it means they are not having any finding of this 14 diseases so that's why i'm telling you be very careful in taking the data yeah another question from john is what if there are no subject matters experts to label data uh you have to find out otherwise what you are building if suppose you have trained your network with the x rays with the pneumonia pic and normal pic then what output is coming you are not able to interpret even it is having pneumonia it is giving correct prediction or not so there are some techniques suppose when we are dealing with uh, this kind of data where we don't have the domain knowledge so we should have a board of uh, like uh, subject matter experts at least we see that there should be three subject matter experts and the output of algorithm should be shown to the, all the three radiologists when two of or three all three are confirmed that yes this is a pneumonia then we can say yes we got a good accuracy so subject matter experts plays a very um, like a crucial role here we cannot do anything in the medical image in even i think without them yeah Yeah. Uh, I don't know. How do you pass the labels in multi-task problems? How do we draft the training input and output? Yeah. So for this multi-class label, what we do when we have a binary class? So uh, we have label like uh, uh, this uh, 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 either normal or pneumonia. When we have included third class here, edema or something else. so what we have to do we have to calculate the uh, finding probability in the x ray and we have to label the data into three uh, like a probabilities the suppose i am talking about the normal so there will be three categories one is it is having uh, finding of pneumonia second is suppose it is normal third is suppose edema so we will put if it is normal we'll put one if it is edema there is edema uh, finding of edema then we'll put uh, now suppose two classes are the pneumonia and edema and there are some overlapping zone so what we'll do we will calculate the probability with the help of weighted loss and then we will divide that probability so zero if um, if uh, always it is normal 100 if it is abnormal it is having some kind of finding then we have to divide that finding into in the terms of probabilities and this is how we generate the csv for each the images 
image and where the findings is there then we have to create the label boxes uh, which will show um, th this is another kind of like training we can do like we can annotate the data this annotation again needs subject matter expert so if the doctor is going to help you to annotate the data it is very good because while training the algorithm know where it has to see for uh, in which reason it has to see and what is the pattern of the disease so this is why we have to divide like uh, we have to find first we have to create the labels in the three categories yeah uh, yeah. I have two questions. The first one is like, uh, I mean, I do work on medical images as well. So the first one is like, uh, the abnormality is uh, very small in size when compared to the whole image because, like, it uh, the test X ray might be like four thousand cross uh, four thousand as well. So, but mm -hmm. our deep learning architectures are trained to like bit low resolution like 224 cross 224 and maximum will be 512 cross 512. So how do you uh, face such kind of challenges? Like because the abnormalities might be very small in size when compared to the uh, actual image. But if we actually downsize the image, the uh, the actual abnormality will be might be in two pixels or three pixels as well. So how do you face such kind of challenges while training the model? Yes. So the thing is that uh, while uh, as he, if we talk about the real time scenario, suppose you have uh, you are taking the images. OK, so first thing you can you may have a JPG image. Second, you may have a DICOM image. Then someone can give you images from the WhatsApp. So there will be a loss also. OK, so now thing is good to have uh, good to train the model with the original dimension but we cannot do as like we have to use this models so we are reducing it the model i think learn automatically it, it, it learns to know how to deal with this kind of uh, abnormality we can just do some image processing kind of thing here so that it can uh, see the quality is it can uh, uh, like a differentiate it, it can learn the differentiate between the opacity and the non-opacity so this is uh, like uh, only we can do here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you for answering. Uh, another question is not actually a technical one. So I mean, when we develop these models and just we, I mean, and then we go to hospitals, but most of the hospitals aren't aware of this technology. How I mean, how do you deal? Uh, I mean, introducing this kind of technology to doctors and how do you convince them in actually? make you using this pro, uh, this algorithms the answer is i am not a salesperson the salesperson business development officer already know how to handle the doctors technically yes we can do that if we talk about the technical part because yes doctor plays a very important role when we are having we are suffered okay so what we can say we can suggest to the doctors that please make use of this technology and if you find something useful inside that, you just give it for a free. They will uh, if they will uh, keep learning and you just ping, ping, and uh, have you used my technology. And when they will use once, they like it, they'll support you, uh, support it. That is the only way. Yeah. Uh, another from the audience that is from Ganesh. So he's asking, are there any companies in India focused on annotating or labeling the data in medical sector? How difficult it is to get the data in terms of digitization and government policies in India? There are, these are two questions. One, two first questions. One, yeah, first one he's asking, so are there any companies in India focused on annotating or labeling the data in medical sector? uh i don't think uh, labeling soft as you will get like drawing.ai uh, drawing uh, dot ai is a software which gives you a annotation facility so tools are available there but i don't think there is any company who is founded by doctors and they are annoting the data for you these kind of works usually done in the research labs okay so like uh, nih there are so many big big uh, communities who used to do the research so they used to annotate. They have a complete setup of all these things. So uh, com commercial part, I don't think we have any. 
yeah. in that and, the <laughs> and the second question is how second difficult question. How, how difficult it is to get the data in terms of digitization and government policies in india yes data privacy is a very plays very important when we talk about the healthcare hipaa compliances are there so we have to like uh, we cannot i think uh, get the data without having any like uh, collaboration with the, any research community if you will collaborate with the research community like hospitals and all you are doing research and all these things definitely they'll uh, give you data and they'll work with you on the publication on the patents so this is one way but yes we cannot say hospitals to give the data because they'll not give you because of uh, this uh, data privacy issues Thanks. i hope i clear <laughs> yeah. once again ma'am so i really enjoyed the session thank you so thank much you. for accepting an in, uh, our invite and presented today for today's session so thank you shweta and thank you vets for giving my giving me this opportunity to present something uh, on this platform and uh, to help some at least some who want to do something in the medical imaging at least having some idea how it works thank you very much thank you